Charles Hayne. Please. You don't? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not now. After, if you can hang that beer out there, the 1500, if you hang that bottle of beer out the end of 1500, I'll yeah. break three minutes. Right, <laughs> Four minutes. If you win it, I'll come out and give you a beer. Oh, great, great. I better win it then. Because I can't afford to buy any beer now. <laughs> Yeah, break five minutes. I want to see if I can break five minutes. Should I? <laughs> that will do me. <laughs>
gradually their successors begin to emerge. We meet Ben Jipko, double gold medalist, and begin to investigate the nature of the act, the act of winning. When I started schooling, I was uh, running four miles to school and four miles home, and I didn't know I was gaining the practice side of it. My interest was to get to school early and get home early. But uh, I think I was, I was doing something. And this went on for almost um, eight years. If you check exactly the way uh, an athlete like Foster competes, the way a person like David Black competes, probably uh, Taylor is one of them, Putamans of Belgium, you, you will know that they are, really, they are really mentally fit. They are not worried of whoever they are going to compete against and they don't underrate any athlete at all. Well, mainly we run for, I run for Kenya and then uh, mine comes in naturally. You, I mean, it is automatic because if the time I win, they'll say Kenya, Kenya has won a medal or gold medal and then Ben Gipcho must be mentioned there if I win. Yes. The competitive nature, ego, dedication, these are obviously factors. trained body, a well-oiled machine, a body which lives is necessary. Control of that body, a dedicated mind. But ultimately, 
There is that moment when the breakthrough is achieved, when suddenly the mind, after much struggling, stands aside. An integration occurs, and momentarily the body surpasses itself, and a winner is born. back in my country here. Yeah? So you fought yeah? Yes. How was it? Unlucky. Well, all, all our boxes have been eliminated the first round. And I mean, like our marathon says, the, uh, we lack experience. Have you been to the games before? Any games? Uh, only the South Pacific game. That's in Tahiti. 1971, and I lost 10. First, first fight, I lost 10. When all happened was, you know, I started running, and it just snapped like that. It's one big snap. I didn't even feel it. It just snapped like that. It's on, and I couldn't walk afterwards. Well, it was just one big, um, I can't really describe it, one big, it wasn't a sound as such, but the feeling of a sound, something like that. One big, you know, grab like that. 
Mm-hmm. Well, I was, I was winning the heat. Yeah, I just covered one person. I was getting ready to, you know, come off the turn when it happened. But what of the others? The majority who, for one reason or another, lose. Some must know from the beginning. They participate in their own terms. But the athletes who almost win, who see the possibility, what of them? Was it a failure of strategy? A failure of will? They probably never know. The record book merely records another result. What do you think is going to happen? Well, there are three or four men that dominate the field, and uh, on the present form shown so far, Brendan Foster of England appears to have his best ever chance of winning a gold medal. Uh, Brendan Foster is a very fast man. He has very good endurance. He ran fifth in the final of the 1500 metres in uh, uh, the Munich Olympics. And uh, no one can play around with him at the end. He's going to be much too fast for him. So therefore, they're faced with a problem. They've got to take it out of him early. Well, David Bedford's taken the lead. And uh, whether he's going to stay there, whether he's going to try and uh, make these cutthroat tactics he did the other day without in interference from the Kenyans remains to be seen. They're going to worry. They're going to worry the leaders, whoever they are. Bedford, Black, Stewart. Twelve laps to run. Foster's tucked in there nicely, uh, sitting waiting to see what happens. And that's the wise thing for him to do. The Kenyans consider Foster the logical man to beat. I think everyone considers Foster the logical favourite. Now we see. Now we see David Black go through to the front. Black is such a strong one, as we saw in the 10,000 metres. He's not likely to relinquish the lead very easily. And uh, now we see Yip Yipcho move up very quickly, very suddenly. And uh, Foster, Foster's taken over. And Foster's really going to put it in now because also Yipcho is very fast, and he can't can't mess around have Yipcho messing around with him on his shoulder. Now, Yip Show's moved up very sharply, and now the race is really on, and Black is tailing them, and the field, the rest of the field is, is drifting right back like I more or less anticipated. It looks like the battle is going to be between Foster and Yip Cho, and with very little wind on the track, it favours a front runner. It doesn't hurt you to get out in front if the wind isn't troubling you, and uh, it's now a question of whether Yip Cho can hang on to Foster and out sprint him in that last, last lap somewhere. Who's the fastest sprinter? Well, uh, I think that Foster would have the edge on Ipcha, but I wouldn't be sure about this. I, I'd favour Foster, but as it is at the moment, tactically, Ipcha is in a very good position because he's sitting. He knows how Foster's going, Foster doesn't know how he's going, and uh, he's got the jump on him. Uh, Ipcha has that the drop on, on Foster, which is always an advantage. Now, whether he's, he's prepared to sit there the rest of the uh, five laps, remains to be seen. 